Signs on the wheel for the drive tonight. Snow showers all over the map. We'll tell you who's going to be shoveling by the end of tonight. Karen. Also, a local university is dealing with racist graffiti and threats, even canceling classes today. Paula. A big gift from Hollywood makes a huge difference for a local school that is literally bringing the world together. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, Detroit police have another smash and grab mystery on their hands as an apparent crime spree hits new victims. This morning, police responded to a liquor store robbery on Detroit's west side at Tireman Street around 1 a.m. They say the robbers used a stolen van to smash their way into the building. The van used in the robbery matches the description and plate number of a van stolen from Perfect Cleaners last week. Police are giving an update on this case right now. We'll have a live report tonight at 5. Classes have been canceled at Kettering University after at least two incidents of threats and racist graffiti are found on bathroom walls on campus. The school located in Flint. The graffiti targeted African-American students and was quickly removed. The university president says he is deeply upset by the incidents. Arad Maloney went to Flint to speak with some of the students who were targeted. Very quiet here on the Kettering University campus today, mainly because classes have been canceled. There was supposed to be a convocation that everybody was going to go to and talk about the racist graffiti that showed up in some bathrooms in Thompson Hall just around the corner here. They canceled that. But the university president ended a trip to Asia to come back and deal with this. Now, Local 4 has been able to find two of the young women who were targeted in this racist graffiti incident, and they talked about their reaction to finding this graffiti. It was actually found by somebody else, but they were brought to it to get a look. Really confused. I'm a little scared yeah. just because I didn't know who would have done it and why they would have done it. So the question becomes, is there a difficult atmosphere here on campus? We'll hear from those young women and get their reaction to all of this coming up on Local 4 News at 5. In Flint, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, thank you, Rod. A Dearborn Heights family is able to escape as their home caught fire early this morning. It happened on Beach Daily near Hoffs. Investigators say the fire started in an upstairs room. A mother and father and their two children were inside at the time. All of them made it out safely. Right now, the cause of the fire is under investigation. Hit or miss snow showers are once again threatening us during the evening hour, rush hour, I should say. So you definitely want to keep a close eye on road conditions. Let's bring in Ben Bailey standing by with his first forecast. Yep, here we go again, Karen. Even though we're seeing more snow showers tonight uh, than we have in the past couple, winter weather advisories have been posted for Sanilac and St. Clair counties. That's where the snow is going to be heaviest, and that's what we're seeing on 4 Live Radar right now. These bands putting down accumulating snow. In fact, there'll be some spots here along the lake here on shoreline that could see as much is five inches of snow by the time this all wraps up later tonight. But you can see how many of us are getting the flakes. Most of these are light, but you can see some of these more moderate snow showers out here to the west. So just like what we saw yesterday, where the intense snow showers show up, it could drop visibility very low in a short period of time. So be on the lookout for that tonight. Temperatures will be down below freezing as soon as the sun sets, and that could lead to some icy roads. We'll talk more about what's to come beyond that in a few minutes. Karen. President Trump started the day saying you're fired and right now he is in one of the bluest states in the nation for the first time since his election. Mr. Trump arrived in Southern California late this afternoon. At this hour, he is supposed to start reviewing some of the prototypes for his pet project, the border wall with Mexico. Later, he addresses Marines at a Marine Air Station and will attend a fundraising event tonight in Los Angeles. But the president made some huge news before leaving D.C. by firing his Secretary of State. Devin Skillian is following that part of the story. And Devin, we just heard from the outgoing Rex Tillerson. Exactly right, Karen. The now former secretary, or at least he will be by midnight tonight, very diplomatic on his way out. President Trump used Twitter this morning to announce that he is replacing Tillerson as his Secretary of State. The announcement came just hours after Tillerson returned to Washington from what became an abbreviated trip to Africa. The president and secretary had differed on issues ranging from how to deal with threats from North Korea to the value of the nuclear arms agreement with Iran. The president says he plans to replace Tillerson with former Congressman Mike Pompeo, who was currently the head of the CIA. This afternoon, uh, Karen just mentioned Tillerson uh, made his remarks. He says he has started the transition at the State Department, proud of what he's accomplished. 
all of us we know want to leave this place as a better place for the next generation. I'll now return to private life as a private citizen, as a proud American, proud of the opportunity I've had to serve my country. I've gotten along well with Mike Pompeo. And frankly, I get along well with Rex, too. And, you know, I wish Rex a lot of good things. I think he's going to do, uh, I think he's going to be very happy. I think Rex will be much happier now. Now, this latest cabinet shakeup has many critics in Washington wondering aloud about the administration's actions. I think it again shows the extraordinary uh, disarray in the White House. Uh, it's too bad when a president and a secretary of state can't be in sync. Well, speaking of being in sync, there was another career casualty at the State Department today. Under Secretary of State Steve Goldstein was fired after he issued a statement saying that Tillerson had not spoken with the president and was not given a reason for his firing. Uh, word went out early this morning that Tillerson basically found that he'd been fired on Twitter. Uh, the White House said Tillerson was told last week that he would be let go. So, Karen, much more on this coming up at 5 o'clock and then on uh, NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt here at 6.30. Back to you. Very big story on that yep. one. All right. Thank you, Devin. Mm -hmm. First at four, we're also tracking other stories making headlines across America. A bus carried a high school band crashed into a 50 foot ravine in Alabama early this morning, killing the driver and injuring the students. The students were returning home from Disney World. You can see where the bus came to that violent stop at the bottom of a steep embankment where the freeway actually crosses over a creek. Rescuers had to use ropes to rappel down to save the passengers. Every band member was taken to the hospital with injuries ranging from minor to life-threatening. An investigation is underway as to why the bus was driving on the median before the crash. Pennsylvania is the latest election battleground where voters could signal how they're feeling about President Trump. Republican Rick Saccone is in a close race with Democrat Connor Lamb in a district that Trump won by 20 points back in 2016. Lamb is running as a moderate Democrat, promising not to support Nancy Pelosi as House Speaker. Saccone says he's not surprised the race is close as Democrats are throwing a lot of resources into the race. It's a rare open seat after Republican Tim Murphy resigned amid a sex scandal. Got a heartwarming new show that is debuting on Local 4 tonight, and a local high school is already benefiting from the hype surrounding Rise. Hamtramck High School has won a special grant for its theater program. Our Paula Topman is live to introduce us to the local students who will get a big boost to pursue their dreams. Hi, Paula. Hi, Karen. So I, I want to show you this theater because this is a theater that's been essentially dead for about 15 years. No drama program at all. But boy, what a difference a nod from Hollywood makes. You know what? And the bottom line is that this is an incredible, incredible opportunity for these kids. And in this case, it's not a case of life imitating art. It's a case of art initiating life. Nick, what's wrong? You're the princess. This is Hamtramck High School. Let's have you leave a little earlier and go slower and quieter. The production is Beauty is a Beast. It's actually a takeoff and a satire of Beauty and the Beast. And these kids are first time drama kids ever. She is preparing a party. Oh dear. Oh dear, what? I already had a party planned. You? You never have parties. You're not the popular one. The school is one of 50 in the nation to get a nod from NBC, winning a $10,000 grant to boost their drama program. Just be yourself. Just, just be natural. But it was my fault that... Don't. Please. No. It's an honor of the new show Rise that premieres on NBC this evening, a show about inspiration that galvanizes a working class town through the drama department. The purpose of the grant is to help drama programs that are at risk uh, either drama programs that have had their budgets cut or schools that don't have drama programs at all. What does at risk mean to a kid from Hamtramck? At risk. Why would it be at risk? Like, we're not doing anything risky in here. Everything is fine. Being low on a totem pole for educational resources. And for the extras, forget about it. I feel like, in a way, we are at risk since we're, like, in the lower tier of, like, funding for schools. But in a way, we're at the advantage because when there's less funding in a way there's more like character but with a boost from hollywood and a supportive community here they are 
and that money from NBC will put a light system and a sound system in. And some of those long forgotten seats in the auditorium will get some love. Because drama is more than drama here. In a school where at least 26 different languages are spoken, drama is literally bringing the world together. I mean, I like made so many new friends and stuff. First, I didn't want to like do any acting and stuff. I'm like, I was very nervous to do it. Well, it helps me like for the future. Like, say I had a job interview, and like drama club just kicks in, and so I don't be nervous. I could just be confident. So it's like drama club brings us all together because I've been seeing them in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have. Okay, so uh, Hamtramck High School's production of Beauty is a Beast actually opens March 21st and 22nd. March 21st and 22nd. And here's the thing, they would love for people who don't live in this community to come out and experience their brand new drama program. But Karen, here's the important thing, and, and, and this story gives me goosebumps. They're already part of the big show. They're already part of the big show. And isn't that the best part of all? It definitely is. Love this story. Thank you so much for sharing, Paula. Me Appreciate too. it. And it is a big night on Local 4 with The Voice kicking things off at 8 o'clock, followed by the season finale of This Is Us. If you're a fan, you know it's all about Kate's wedding tonight. Then stick around for Rise and Local 4 News at 11. Still ahead, it is one of the most iconic cars on the road, but it's about to be retired once again. We'll talk about that in trending stories also ahead. Our snow has been annoying, but you have to really feel bad for the folks in the Northeast. They're getting hit again. We're tracking another nor'easter. Up first, residents are listening to a police warning in Austin, Texas. New information this afternoon on a bombing spree that has the city on edge. Attack. The city of Austin, Texas is still on edge, but luckily no new package explosions have been reported today. Police have warned residents to avoid opening any unexpected deliveries. Right now, police and federal agents are investigating three packages that detonated, killing two people. As of this morning, police received 80 reports of suspicious packages, but they were all false alarms. Police have linked three explosions and say the packages did not come through regular delivery services, but were left on doorsteps. The victims have all been minorities, but police say they cannot determine a motive at this time. The third nor'easter in less than two weeks is dumping up to two more feet of snow in the northeast. Blizzard warnings have been issued for almost all of the coastal Massachusetts, New Hampshire and Maine area. At times, some areas may get up to three inches of snow per hour. On top of snow, wind is expected to gust up to 70 miles an hour. In total, more than 45 million people are under some kind of weather warning in the area. And last I checked, I think spring is seven days away, in case you're wondering. It's not like anybody's <laughs> counting that down, are they? Not that I'm really keeping close track. We're going to get a little bit of the stuff, nothing like northeast. No, there will be spots that have to shovel this, uh, but they're limited. Most of us, it's just that nuisance stuff yeah. again uh, as we get into the evening. But the visibilities are going to be the thing that we're watching because in some of these snow squalls, uh, it's going to be tough to see on the roads, at least for a short period of time and a very small distance. Right now, Port Huron down to two and a half miles. The rest of us not seeing a problem with visibility. And you can see most of this stuff is light, but that's where you get those darker shades of blue, a little bit more intense snow showers uh, there in Sandlack and St. Clair counties where the winter weather advisory is in effect. I got a shot in from Sandusky. This was just a few minutes ago saying snow coming down pretty hard up there and wondering if this is winter's last roar. It may be, uh, as Karen said, we've got seven days left of the season, and this likely will be our last significant snow that we'll have to be dealing with. You can see on the uh, radar today, most of this activity is in the southern half of the state. There's not a whole lot going on up here, but still we anticipate that there'll be at least some snow showers going uh, through the evening hours and into the early part of the overnight. If you look uh, out over uh, the downtown skyline, you can see it's a little bit darker over here towards the Rens and there's some snow showers up into Lake St. Clair right now. 37 the current temperature and the visibility at the airport no problem at nine miles, but we will be seeing snow showers again through the evening by 11 o'clock when we see for local four news at 11. Most of this is going to be dried up. Uh, the places that will still be seeing snow will be up here in the thumb. Those will go away shortly after midnight and after that it's snow free. Uh, we've got sunshine coming in tomorrow. In fact, more sun than clouds. We'll see a few clouds start to build back in the afternoon, but compared to where we have been, it's going to be bright and dry. The one exception to that snow free forecast 
It is going to be late Wednesday night. It's 1, 2 in the morning. May see a snow shower skirt through, but with most of us asleep, if a tree falls in the forest, who knows, right? Uh, but otherwise, temperatures be steadily increasing as we head towards the weekend. Lows tonight noticeably cold. We'll go to about 22 in the city. We'll call it officially 20 at the airport. And those are the warmest numbers. Most of us are going to be in the teens for overnight lows. Milan, you'll be at 19 to come see at 19 to start out tomorrow morning. West zone locations, a lot of teens here, especially the further west you get. Looks like we'll probably hold on to 20 right there around uh, 275 in Novi and Canton. And in our north zone, low temperatures overnight in the teens at a lot of locations. Maybe a little bit milder up there in Sanilac County where the clouds hold on just a little bit longer. Tomorrow, though, we'll call it partly cloudy, especially early. We'll see a lot of sunshine with that 37 degree high. Some improvement as we head towards the end of the week. But for St. Patty's Day weekend, 42 Saturday, 47 on Sunday. And look at all that sunshine that's going to take us into spring. And there it is, Karen, beginning at 12. 15 on Tuesday afternoon. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Ben. Still ahead is the end of the road for an iconic car and the money secrets many people are keeping from their partners. We've got trending stories next. Plus, a nine year old boy pulls off an amazing rescue. We'll tell you why this man is calling the youngster his guardian angel. We'll be right back. In today's trending stories, get ready to say goodbye to the Volkswagen Beetle once again. The car company is going to end production of the iconic car that's been around since 1938. Volkswagen stopped production once before, if you recall, back in 2003, only to bring it back in 2011. There have been rumors of an electric bug, but Volkswagen says don't count on it. People of a certain age will remember bug mania. Remember Herbie the love bug, slug bug. Do you remember that, Ben? Like yeah. when you'd see one driving and you'd punch your brother that was really hard. My, that was my parents' <laughs> first car. That's the first car I remember driving. Seriously, I think they're cute. They are. I don't, yeah, I never had one though. Well, this story might spark some tricky conversation tonight for couples. A new survey finds 20% of Americans refuse to tell anyone how much money they make, and that includes significant others. The new survey found most couples wait for specific milestones to share that information. 45% wait until they're moving in together. 15% wait until they're engaged, and 10% wait until they're actually married. But experts say early communication about finances can prevent a lot of headaches down the road. And we have a story of this nine-year-old boy, he's from South Carolina, who did something really amazing. He saved the life of a man who is being crushed underneath a car. Alan Clemens is still in pretty rough shape, but he is lucky to be recovering in the hospital. He says he was working on his Mustang with the car up on blocks when the car slid off and fell on top of him. Clemens was calling for help. Forget this, about an hour and a half. No one heard him. The nine-year-old Malachi Coffee finally heard him and used a jack to lift the car off of Clemens. And the little boy went for help. And I don't know how he did it. But a little fella that wasn't robbed about two feet long, that Jack, and he jacked that car completely up off me. He's my garden angel. He sure is. Clemens faces some physical therapy, but he is expected to recover. Still ahead, yoga with a twist. If you've been reluctant to try yoga, this approach just might appeal to you or at least tickle your funny bone. We'll explain inspired me to be the person I want to be and are living proof that the hardest things in life prove to be the most worthwhile. It all started with a simple thank you. I'm that one weird person who still does everything the old-fashioned way. A note from a Metro Detroit teen who happens to be an aspiring astronaut. She's just such a good, kind person. I'm Sandra Ali. What happened next led to a surprise trip that's out of this world. I'm astronaut Chris Cassidy. How are you guys, how are you guys doing there? Tonight at 11. I believe. All right, finally, first and foremost, adding another twist to yoga. I know we talk about yoga a no lot. No pun intended. Uh <laughs> Those are students in India, and that yoga class all had, was laughing to the stretching, breathing, and movement. An Indian physician started laughter yoga back in the 1990s. Though well, it's not scientifically proven, supporters say laughter yoga improves blood circulation lower stress and boost the immune system. Nothing else, it's a lot of fun. Do it the right way first before you do it. <laughs> it looks kind of fun, I would try it. Once. Maybe a couple times. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for First and Four. Inside Edition's next.